Everywhere we look, there is evidence of industrialization. From aisles and aisles of foods readily available at the grocery store to the phones in our pockets. But how did we get from steam engines to spaceships and virtual reality? And how did we do it over the course of just a few generations? Today we'll look at how industrialization progressed and spread over time to answer our three guiding questions. What were the common features of industrialization? How did industrialization spread, and what factors affected how and when the United States, Germany, and Japan industrialized? We'll also gather information and evidence to respond to the big-picture question, how did industrialization revolutionize different nations? Every nation has its own industrialization journey. Some, like Britain and the United States, started in the 18th century. Others, like Japan and Germany, started later. Others are still in the process. Because these journeys are so varied, let's take a moment to establish some of the common characteristics of industrialization. Technological innovations and inventions. An economy focused on manufacturing urbanization, and changes to social and political structures. Another common feature of industrialized nations is imperialism, which is when a stronger nation gains control of another nation for political or economic gain, like access to valuable resources or trading partners. Let's pause here and answer the first guiding question. What were the common features of industrialization? Britain tried to keep a tight lid on its industrial secrets to protect its monopoly on industrialization. A monopoly is the exclusive possession or control of a product, service, or industry. Britain tried to prevent engineers and skilled workers from leaving the country or sharing information. As you can see, clearly that plan didn't work. Eventually, industrialization did spread, though not evenly or equitably, around the globe. But how did industrialization spread? Let's examine a few examples. First, immigration. In 1789, Samuel Slater emigrated from Britain and set up the first textile factory in the U.S., which used the spinning mule shown here to manufacture cotton. He constructed the mill from memory because British officials would have confiscated any plans or documents when he left Britain. Second, foreign investment. In 1868, Scotsman Thomas Blake Glover introduced the steam locomotive to Japan, prompting Japan to construct its own rail system. The railroad was partly funded by foreign investors, the British, and designed by European engineers, who agreed to share their skills and expertise with their Japanese colleagues. Let's add that as number three on the list, sharing skills and expertise. Number four is adopting new manufacturing technology. In the 1850s, German industrialist and steel manufacturer Alfred Krupp introduced the British Bessemer Furnace, a new tool for mass-producing steel, to Germany. Ultimately, Germany became the dominant force in steel manufacturing in Europe. And number five, imperialism. Imperial powers spread industrialization to their colonies. For example, Britain established railroads in India, and American sugar companies established plantations to grow and process sugarcane in Hawaii. Let's pause here and answer guiding question two. How did industrialization spread? Next, we'll explore the factors that affected how and when different nations industrialized by examining three case studies, the United States, Germany, and Japan. Part 1, the United States. Factor number 1, slavery and domestic cotton production. As you previously learned, early industrialization in the U.S. focused on textiles. Southern plantations and slave labor provided the cotton necessary for the textile industry. Even after slavery had been abolished in the North, slavery continued to remain critical to the Southern agricultural economy and the industrialized Northern economy. 
After the Civil War and the abolition of slavery, agriculture became increasingly industrialized and mechanized with the development of chemical fertilizers, tractors, and other technologies. Factor number two, a sprawling nation. A second factor that affected American industrialization is its size and regional divisions. In addition to the divide between North and South, there was also an industrial gap between the West and the rest of the nation. In the 1800s, the Wild West, famous for its cowboys, homesteaders, and lawless towns, was a mix of new states and loosely organized territories. Meanwhile, the first skyscrapers were being built in cities like Chicago and New York. Factor number three, big business. Another factor that set American industry apart was the creation of large, powerful corporations. Corporations like Rockefeller's Standard Oil and Carnegie Steel dominated their industries by forming monopolies, generating tremendous profits. This created a new class of wealthy American industrialists, or people involved in the ownership and management of industry. At the same time, these corporations were beholden to their shareholders, or people who invest in a corporation in exchange for a share or piece of the company called stock. To keep shareholders happy, corporations cut costs to increase profits, often at the expense of laborers. Let's pause and answer the first part of our third guiding question. What factors affected how and when the United States industrialized? Part 2. Germany Factor number 1. Regionalization and Unification It's hard to pinpoint when German industrialization began because Germany wasn't yet a unified nation. Instead, it was divided into many German-speaking states. Without a central government to support industrialization, some states began to industrialize while others resisted. However, Germany's neighbors, specifically Britain, Belgium and France had emerged as industrial powerhouses. Germany had to catch up. After decades of attempts at unification, Germany finally became a single unified nation in 1871, launching it into a period of shockingly rapid industrialization. Factor number two, cold, hard steel. While American and British industrialization focused on textiles, Germany was focused on coal and its most productive industry, steel. Remember Alfred Krupp, the German steel manufacturer? His company, Krupp Steel, was a massive success and went on to become one of the chief suppliers of steel in both world wars. Let's pause a moment to add to our response to the third guiding question. What factors affected how and when Germany industrialized? Part 3. Japan Similar to Germany, Japan's journey toward industrialization started late due to the social, political, and economic structure of Japan's Edo period. Factor number 1. Tradition and Isolation During the Edo period, 1603 to 1867, Japan was ruled by the Tokugawa shogunate, the hereditary military dictatorship of Japan. During this period, Japan had a policy of isolationism, a policy of remaining socially, politically, and economically separate from other nations. Remember learning about feudalism in Europe, lords, knights, and peasants? Under the Tokugawa shogunate, Japan was a feudal society. Japan was technically ruled by the emperor and aristocracy, but they held little real power. The shogun, a military dictator, was really in charge, which is why it's called a shogunate. Local areas were governed by lords called daimyo and samurai. Peasant farmers and artisans were higher in the social hierarchy than merchants, who were at the bottom because they made money through trade, which was all but impossible due to Japan's isolationism. Factor number two, colonize or be colonized. In the 1830s and 1840s, Japan witnessed the British colonization of its neighbor, China. Then, in 1853, American Commodore Matthew Perry anchored a fleet of heavily armed ships off the coast of Japan. Why? To convince Japan to end its policy of isolationism and open itself up to trade with Western nations. Afraid of what might happen if they refused, Japan agreed. However, many in Japan realized that it needed to industrialize both for its own economic benefit and for its own defense. 
it was time for a change. Factor number three, Meiji Restoration. In 1868, a group of reformers overthrew the Tokugawa shogunate. This came to be known as the Meiji Restoration, the restoration of imperial rule under Emperor Meiji. This change completely reshaped Japan's future. One change was the adoption of the Charter Oath, an Enlightenment-inspired document that fundamentally changed Japan's economy, government, and culture. Under the oath, one, Japan became more democratic. Two, the feudal system was abolished. Three, people could choose their professions. Four, new laws based on the just laws of nature were adopted. And five, Japan ended its policy of isolationism. Remember Commodore Perry? Japan definitely did, so it created a large, centralized, and industrialized army. Once afraid of being colonized, Japan would ultimately emerge as a major industrial and imperial power. Let's pause and conclude our answer to the third guiding question. What factors affected how and when Japan industrialized? The nations we've examined were not the only nations to industrialize, but they do demonstrate how the industrialization process varied depending on each nation's unique context. Whether early or late, or fast or slow, each industrializing nation got us that much closer to the world we live in today because history is everywhere. Hey, hey.